You're welcome back investors. I've got a big recap for you from 2024, starting off the year with the best robo advisors. So if we rewind back to 2023, which you'll see right behind me, you'll know that I had three, uh, three real big ones from last year. Will they be the same ones? Stick around and find out. We're going to do a little Google trend right now to see as we start off the year what it looks like. So what do we actually see the most of? So here we actually have Betterment, Wealthfront, and Schwab. Now they, those may or may not be the ones we're going over today. Again, stick around. I'd like to give a shout out too. I turned on the member section, turned on subscriptions. I want to give a special shout out to those that have subscribed. I'll make sure to put you down in the comment section. Make sure to put a special note down there for you. I want to make sure I take care of everyone. We look here, we see what's actually trending across the United States over the last 10 years. And we see that Wealth or Betterman has actually skyrocketed um, over this time, but Wealthfront's right behind it. And Schwab is kind of nowhere to be seen. If we look at Betterman, it's across all 50 states. Wealthfront the same way, Schwab not so much. The heaviest states for Wealthfront are California. The heaviest states again for uh, Betterman are, are California and New York. Really, you know, New York's big, uh, big uh, finance hub, I kind of get that. Schwab's just really tough. Schwab's headquartered in California, so I guess that does make sense. All right, enough about that. First one is Wealthfront. I've used Wealthfront for years. Uh, I'd migrated it f over a couple years ago and I transferred most of my, deployed most of my capital back uh, last year into Wealthfront. A couple things to know, management fee 0.25. So right along with what the others are, uh, 0.25 annually expense ratio. Fund expense ratio is around 0.08. Uh, to 0.11. The initial investment is 500. So let's keep that in mind as we continue to go through uh, the target audience. So I would say more tech savvy investors who want to appreciate advanced financial planning tools and tax efficient strategies. So pros, we've got tax loss harvesting that's available for all taxable accounts, no minimum investment needed. We've got financial planning. So we got retirement, home buying, college savings, 529s, etc. And we've got auto rebalancing, which is kind of table stakes again in 2024, but uh, still there. Cons, limited human interactions. We don't get to talk to a human advisor like we do with Betterment. And the third one we're gonna go over today, um, 500 could be too much for some, but you know, maybe not enough, you know, maybe that's just fine for others. Compared to Schwab, which I did just give away, we're gonna be going over Schwab. Compared to Schwab and Betterment, Wealthfront stands out for the sophisticated planning tools. And I will say having used all three, I can gold stamp that one for tax efficiency features. All right, so let's just walk through real quick what it looks like. Here's the home page. You'll see here, you can see uh, what you look like today, what it expects your growth to look like. I've got some cash deployed here in a high yield savings account. I've got an investment, the Alpha Growth Fund here. This handles all my equities. So I've got some US stocks, some foreign, some emerging markets. You can always go in here and edit your portfolio anytime, which I really like at Wealthfront. If I wanna add individual stocks or individual ETFs, I can do that. Quite recently, I just changed over and moved out some municipal bonds, cut down on that, moved into some more real estate with some with V&Q as a REIT. But at any time you go in here and manage, I will say, I think Wealthfront has the cleanest uh, UI of any of the offerings we're gonna see today. No offense to the others. I just think Wealthfront really has done a good job here in, in bringing people in and making that not only a virtual uh, web experience, but mobile experience as well. All right, I can edit, I can borrow cash actually. And that's another thing I wanna bring up to Wealthfront. I wanna bring up is you're actually able to borrow against your equities. So in this case, I can borrow a certain amount. It gives me the interest rate. I get that immediately. So I can keep investing my money, my equity there. I don't have to pull that out and hit a taxable uh, moment. So I have to pay taxes on it. I can borrow against my own equity and pay it back when I need to, sort of a, a self-loan if you want to. Uh, another thing you'll see here is they break down and they explore ETFs based on what they call uh, grouping. So in this case, I can go in here and say, maybe I'm interested in generative AI. Um, I can look at companies that are in that. Maybe I'm into supply chain. Maybe I'm into lower volatility, more the staples. So we've got the Cokes, the McDonald's, the Hershey's, the, the Pepsi, Southern Company. I can go to that. It lets you invest in those. So you can do not only equities and an automated strategy, you can do standalone stocks, you can do cash, you can borrow against it. It's really got everything again, except the personal, if you want to talk to someone over there. All right, enough about Wealthfront. Let's move to number two, Betterment. All right, so Betterment. Uh, if we look at Betterment here, it's one of the largest and most well-known robo-advisors that offers personalized automated indexing and financial planning. So I have had Betterment in the past. I've moved a lot of money out of Betterment into Wealthfront. Not to say it's Betterment's a, a bad choice at all, just for what I was looking for. 
um, in terms of picking individual ETFs and stocks, it was more, it was, it was better for me to go out and do that as well as I'll say, once you hit a certain amount and that amounts a hundred thousand, you can start direct indexing with Wealthfront that you can't do with Betterment. All right, let's stop talking about what's bad with Betterment. Let's talk about what is good. So pros, you get a low minimum. It's, it's a dollar easy entry for beginners. You do get access to human advisors, which I've used that's available on a premium plan, or you can produce, or you can pay for those on an individual basis. Um, you do get goal-based planning, you get tax loss harvesting, and they do have socially responsible investing programs. So if you look here in flagship, this is one of my older accounts, you can go in here and you can actually choose a socially responsible, maybe an ESG portfolio that you're interested in. You can pick that. Um, if I go into portfolio analysis, I'm sorry, if I go into holdings, I nope, it's in portfolio analysis. I could go in here, I can edit this, and I can actually move into a portfolio that is more ESG and socially responsible focus. So if you actually look here, I can go in socially responsible. Perfect, right there, um, you're good to go. I'll actually link my old 2023 video right up here above my head. So if you want a refresher on what that looks like, make sure you hit that. Uh, it'll take you right back and you can do a little compare and contrast. All right, so cons. So there are higher fees for the premium plan. So you're looking at a 0.40 inch, uh, expense ratio, not a 0.25 as you start to manage over $100,000. So just be careful with that. The expense ratios can start to get a little higher than what Wealthfront is, but you do get access to human advisors. So it may or may not be worth it for you. And there's no direct indexing. So the advanced tax strategies available with Wealthfront, you don't get that with Betterment. So if you're at that with Wealthfront, like I said, 100,000 or more, You'll direct invest, and all that means is you're able to invest in individual stocks instead of the ETFs. So instead of paying an ETF fee, an expense fee, you're able to directly invest into those individual names. So Tesla, Microsoft, Google, whatever. Um, and you can recognize potential greater returns by harvesting losses on an individual stock versus an ETF. That's a whole other video. Uh, stay tuned for that. Now, comparison-wise, Betterment offers a little bit lower intra barrier than some of the others, so Schwab and Wealthfront. Um, and more personalized advice than Wealthfront. So it could be a little more versatile, but potentially more expensive for premium services. All right, and number three, uh, that is Schwab. So kind of no no uh, surprise here. Schwab is probably the one I would rank, you know, the last is definitely a robo-advisor I've used. So far back that I checked the other day and I'm actually eight years ago is when I first started investing. I invested in it for about 18 months and then got out of it. I think one of the first things you'll notice with Schwab is the user interface needs a complete overhaul and a complete uh, polish. So the, uh, you know, if you're looking for an easy to use interface, this may or may not be worth it for you. So it does le leverage Schwab's vast resources to for a robo, no, uh, robust, no, no fee ro uh, robo advisory service. So if you are a Schwab customer, this the expense ratio on this or the management fee for this um, goes down to zero. The initial investment minimum, and this is where it starts to get really dinged along with the interface, it's $5,000. So again, if you're a longtime Schwab customer and you have a lot of money, a lot of capital with Schwab, or maybe you've just invested with them for a long time through a personal financial advisor, it may be something to stay with and look forward to. However, that $5,000 minimum and the UI and the lack of investment options could be enough to send people running. But let's take a little deeper look. Now, if you look here, this is my old portfolio and you can see uh, from an equity standpoint, uh, let's let's go out, here's some fixed income, excuse me. So I've got bonds, bank loans, et cetera. If I move out here, I've got cash and then I've got stock. Um, of course, they're gonna lean towards the Schwab ETFs, of course, but they don't give you a, a, a much of an option. So you'll see international, you'll see US exchange, you'll see international high dividend, US high dividend stocks, you'll see all that. But again, when it comes to actually, you know, if you want to change out an allocation, you know, if I go back here to Wealthfront, if I wanna go over, you know, and change what it looks like from my core portfolio and say, you know, edit, I can make those changes very easily. I can even switch portfolios and say direct indexing, classic. It's much different with Schwab. You know, again, between a brand new paint job that's needed, I know I've harped on that, but it's it it's it's something that a lot of people need today. And that mobile experience, we haven't talked about that. We will. It's certainly not there. But the the touch and ease of use to go from a betterment and wealthfront to what Schwab is is very difficult uh, to get over if you're coming from wealthfront. Um, or better, but they do have goal setting and it makes it easy to set a goal so I can review my profile. I can I can look at what my uh, portfolio allocation looks like here. So on the left, you can actually see, um, you know, U.S. high dividend, we'll see international. But when it comes to, you know, funding it and looking, you know, what the what the holdings are, it just doesn't stack up very well in terms of options and flexible 
uh, growth patterns of what you'll see from something like Betterment, where Betterment and Wealthfront are continuing to invest in a lot of Vanguard, a lot of BlackRock, you know, VTI, VWO, that's all the stuff I have in Wealthfront. You're not really getting that exposure because Betterment and Wealthfront don't actually produce any ETFs or Schwab does. So of course, they're gonna lean into their own. Those expense ratios on those could be very high. One thing I'll say here is, here's my investment profile summary. Not all this is gonna be visible for security reasons, but they do ask you questions. You know, what do you wanna do? How long, you know, how many years do you expect to invest? Your target amount, uh, withdrawal income, your current balance, you know, when you hear risk, what do you think? So they have all the staples there of what it would look like to advise a new customer of what it would look like. They're asking all the right questions. I think the execution and the fit and finish for Schwab or something that even eight years later is sorely is sorely lacking. Uh, let's move back into Schwab and we'll see what this looks like. So they do have investing insights. You know, they do open that up for customers to look at, which I think is great. You know, if you really don't know what you're doing, um, you can go to premium, you know, you can contact them. They do have phone support. They do have the ability to talk to someone. So again, Betterment and Schwab have the ability to have human advisor support where Wealthfront does not. So again, I've harped on that as well. If you're a person that likes to pick up the phone and call, Wealthfront probably isn't for you. So keep that in mind. All right, you know, it makes it, they make it very simple to transfer money in and out. I've done that before. Uh, relationship summary, something they've, uh, they've added. They talk more about their fees. They're becoming more transparent as a fiduciary to you. Again, it, there's really no right or wrong. Uh, now, the last thing I'm gonna go over is, this is an article from CNBC, and it just talks about some of the best robo-advisors. And number one that they've ranked for beginners is Betterment. I think, I think I would agree with that. Betterment for beginners is probably the place to start. And you can get more info here. I'll make sure to link it down below. Best for parents, Wealthfront. I think it's better for more advanced users that want to pick things, pick individual stocks, ETFs, and have more customization and control. Charles Schwab, best for high net worth. Yeah, that could possibly be true. Um, they do have some other ones. Maybe your extra, extra perks with SoFi, you know, credit cards and home loans and personal loans, things like that. Uh, you know, they have that listed there. You know, they break it down, you know, kind of what I've done here today. If you're interested in some of the other ones, what is a robo advisor? I'll put those down there. But all in all, uh, these are three of the best robo advisors from this year. What I like to know is what do you use today? What are you looking for in a robo advisor? What have you used and what will you not compromise on? You know, there's certain things that I will not compromise on from my robo advisor and from my financial advisor from that side of the business. There's just things that I will not compromise on. So I'm curious to know what yours are. Leave your comments down below. As always, let me know what you think and don't forget to design your financial freedom. Take care, bye-bye.